Good morning, good morning, good morning. My name is Sean Dexter and I welcome you to the Manga Grove for your daily analysis video. Holy crap. And I thought yesterday was exciting. These 24 hours have been insane. Bitcoin has literally dumped 50% and then pumped 50% all within a 24 hour to 48 period. This is insane i hope you guys are absorbing all of this like i said this is a learning opportunity at the very least of a lifetime you are not going to see something like this again for decades all right these are going to be war stories that you tell your kids some days holy crap bitcoin's still moving on and over to the upside i am long we have a lot to talk about let's get started there's so much to talk about so much to talk about and man um first i do want to start off with saying that i hope everybody's safe out there i hope everybody is trading safely i know everybody in the mango is definitely trading safely we are doing the stress-free way and honestly I am so proud of everyone everyone in the mango grove everyone in the mango seed I think we are likely the only community that has not only come out of this unscathed but we are making some serious profits out of this move okay there's a bunch of you who caught major major profits on the way down and then there's a bunch of us who managed to catch a major win this morning on this 50% move to the upside and not just on Bitcoin okay there are guys in the mango community in the mango seed that caught moves across several coins actually let me go ahead and pull up um, the telegram chat over here and man yes Bitcoin do it do it for me okay hold up okay so um, okay yeah right here I wanted to show you this guy Tommy Tommy this is a shout out just for you man I am so proud of you I am so freaking proud of you I'm only going to talk about one of Tommy's wins and th this one right he caught XTZ at a dollar and he sold at around two dollars in and out very quick saws opportunity and pounced on it and then D big 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 props to him too, man. This guy, I know how much of a hard worker he is. He works hard and props to him too. Man, 50% in a very, very, very quick move on link. And that's the thing, right? When you are trading with the stress-free mindset, when you are trading patiently, you are not scrambling to get out of your bad trades. You have the presence of mind to spot the opportunity and pounce on it. And hey, I caught a really good option, uh, opportunity, a really good trade too. Um, so th th this is a little misleading, by the way. As you can see, I caught 3,700, 3,600 and another position too. These are two futures contracts. I essentially got um, uh, positions on three futures contracts on the June, the March, as well on the Septembers on Derbit. Um, Derbit does have the September contracts, by the way, for those of you who are wondering, since BitMEX apparently has does not have the Septembers open yet. Okay, going back to what I say, um, this is a bit misleading because these were actually 3,700 and 3,600 on the futures which were trading at a discount, right? That's why I was able to catch these prices. Now they are trading at, I think, only a $100 discount. At the time, they were trading at a $400 discount, okay? So all those, all those, um, yes, it's misleading, but I got those profits. I got those buys and I was talking about this yesterday. In yesterday's video, I said, guys, check out the Deribit futures because at times like this, at times like this, the liquidity disappears and you can catch some really, really good buys. And I caught them again, again, right? And it wasn't that hard at all, man. It wasn't like when you're trying when you're trying to play on the perpetuals, I don't I would not have been able to get these positions on the perpetuals. I think perpetuals didn't even come down come down that low on Derbit. I know they came down really low on BitMEX, but I'm not sure about Derbit. I don't think so, at least. It didn't come down to thirty six hundred. But yeah, um back on over. Like everybody did so well, man. Everybody was so happy, and that's why I'm so happy. Because when everybody around you is doing well too, everything does everything just that much better. Everything is that much better. You don't want to be doing a lo well alone, guys. You want everybody around you to be happy too. And how did we do it? by doing it the mango way by not being FOMO artists by not chasing price you think it did not um it did not hurt to just watch price go down this entire time and me not have a, a part in it at all because i wanted to short at 8500 if you guys do remember and my patience this time did not pay off on the way down at least right it did not pay off but look at how the market rewarded me man i actually managed to catch a uh, jesus christ 50 percent man already like if you go on over to the weekly now, by the way, you will see that the move from the bottom, and this is only considering, this is considering that you bought 3,800. We bought 3,600, 3,700, right? This is already 52%. It's more than the move towards the downside, which was actually, yeah, 50%. So if this actually goes all the way back up, 
I don't think it's going to go back up. And we let's go ahead and actually talk about this. So much to talk about today. So what is Bitcoin going to do? Is Bitcoin going to go to go um, up? Is Bitcoin going to go down? What are we going to see? Let me say one thing first. This is ugly. This is ugly as hell. And this changes a lot for a while now we've been talking about this low over here at around 6400 we said that if one of two things happen either we close a candle underneath these candle closes here at 6885 or we even wick on any time frame so if we close a daily or a weekly i think we said daily or 12 hour actually so let's say daily for now daily underneath 6800 then we are likely going to see um a test of the weekly 5300 level the reason i'm saying 5300 by the way because we first mentioned it over here when we were still sitting in december and the weekly uh 200 moving average was sitting at around 5300 i do believe at the time right so that's why we were targeting that if we had broken those levels but we didn't we did not uh, close a candle underneath there and we did not take out this wick low at 6300 6400 either instead what we do we break we broke that four four day ascending triangle to the upside retested gave, gave us some all the way to 10300 but here here, that's when we did it, and that's when it got ugly. We wicked underneath, and we closed the candle a daily underneath too, clearly, and boom. Now, did I expect us to go all the way down to freaking 3,000? No way, no way. And this is where things get very, very interesting. Let's go ahead and turn on the Ichimoku, right? By the way, this was our big sign. This is where I'm feeling really a little, little bad. I should have just taken the trade, um, but I was being a little, in, in hindsight, it's easy to say, right? Yeah, Sean, you should just take the trade. But anyways, I missed this move, right? We lost the Kijun, lost the Tenkin, and what's the next play after that? The 200 moving average, right? That's just, this is one of our plays in the book. And uh, this also lined up with the fact that once we took out the 6,427 wick, we went and tested the 200 moving average. But again, this is where things get interesting. And people are asking me, Sean, is this capitulation? Is this the bottom? It may be, it may be. I do not want to say yes, but there are signs. And the reason I'm saying that is because not only did we polarize through this major 200 moving average, but we came down and we took out this major level over here. Okay, this major, let me go ahead and delete everything off the chart, actually remove drawings. Okay, so we took out this major level over here which was um, basically the retest for this ascending time that we broke on to the upside, 4, 000, uh, uh, 4, which is around $4,100. And we took out these levels over here too, guys. Basically, let's mark out this. And let's mark out these guys over here, okay? So these are major levels that we just went right through. So a lot of people were, play, were likely playing those levels, trying to buy over there. And all of them, all of them got pulverized guys pulverized we wick past all of that and now we're defending it this is looking like a major major bounce major capitulation and we do have volume to kind of kind of hint towards that too we can go ahead and check um gdax too actually let's have a check gdax coinbase yeah that is good volume let's go ahead and check bitfinex next yeah, there's good volume, but even after all of this, guys, even after all of this, and holy crap, I do want to talk about this too in, in a bit, but even after all of this, I would say that, hey, I do want to give this time to see whether or not we actually defend this on the weekly. We are on Friday today, so we have only a couple of days before we close. So far, it's looking really, really good. I am sitting long. I am not intending on holding on to that long if we close underneath this weekly over here. In fact, I've been trading aggressively throughout this throughout today, which is why I have my camera off by the way because i've been staring at the screen all goddamn day today i've not traded this actively this aggressively throughout the day for a very long time there's just been far too much opportunity to ignore and yeah i've been trading in and out in and out just just to kind of like you know buffer give, give me give me some buffer in case we do see some sell-off and now i'm feeling a little good about how things are going we're sitting way very well in profits and things are looking good even on the low time frames yeah but going back to what i was saying i want to wait to see how this weekly closes if we do actually close about this weekly 200 moving average that's going to be the first good sign that hey you know what maybe maybe this is actually a major major low failing that if this is not a low okay okay first let's say we close under the underneath this level over here okay at 5500 ish which is basically the weekly 200 moving average let's say we do not defend it let's say we close underneath it then i do think we're going to come and retest these guys over here okay this ascending triangle i do think that we come there spend some time grinding and then the bull case is for us to put in a high uh, high 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 low on the weekly wait for all of that to pan out similar to what we did over here and then go on over to the upside okay so basically consolidation over here start Putting in trends on the daily, on the two-day, three-day, and then go on over to the upside. 
that is the bull case if we do not close underneath the 200 moving average the bear case is that this is not the low this is not um uh, the last of what we have seen and that we come down lower and test these levels instead and we test around 3000 um 200 3100 ish put in a high low compared to these guys over here uh, but honestly, if we actually, if this is not the low, guys, I think we're coming out to 2,000. You guys may not like hearing that, but if this is not the low, I think we're coming out to 2,000. And you guys have to prepare for all of that, okay? Mentally now, start preparing for if this, then that. That's how we do it in Mango. That's how we're going to continue doing it, okay? That's what has kept us safe throughout all of this, guys. We have not been moon boys. Yes, we always shoot for crazy, crazy moves, which is why even over here, even though I had so much conviction on this major weekly level, which by the way, lined up at the top of the cloud too. We didn't talk about it during the time, but hey, here it is. Um, even though I had so much conviction on this level over here, I only took partial profits, right? Why? Because we can always, always hope hope for a major move towards the downside like this like this crazy so, sorry major move to the, towards the upside in this situation right like what we saw over here guys you guys always wonder why do i why does sean always leave some some in it's because of this now i wasn't short this time around but if i was short i would have left a position in only to catch hope for a position like this because these are life-changing moves guys this could be life-changing if i'd actually caught the shot over here and uh aimed for partial profits over here my position would have been big enough that if we actually came over here it would have been a massive move which is why i never ever take out my entire position unless it is planned if it is a trend trade i always keep some on right because that is a definition of a trend trade you stay in while the trend is your friend and if you're taking this as a trend trade hey this was a very very quick trend and now we are bouncing so yeah we talked about the situation if bitcoin closes the weekly underneath the 200 moving average we said that we have two scenarios where we come down and we grind against these levels over here the 4000 3900 level the next scenario is that this is not the low over here and we actually come down to the 3000 level in which case i think we just spill on over to the 2000 right quick recap over there oops let me go back on over to the weekly and yeah so the next situation is what happens if we actually start closing over here well does this actually form a base if we start closing weeklies above that level that is actually a good sign but we still have a lot of work to do uh, major levels of course is 6800 6, 6, and then we do have a level let's go on over to the actually we can just go can go on to a daily but we can just use the weekly we have a level right over there let's go market quickly so coming in at around 6,100 ish that we can put it slightly higher there. So there, so those two levels over here. Okay, so we have a major level coming up right overhead currently sitting around $300 above current price, 6,150. If we can actually close dailies above that, then I'll be looking towards 6,836, okay? But, but that's all dependent on whether or not Bitcoin closes the weekly over this 200 weekly moving average at the currently it's looking like we are when you see a wick like this guys it does look like okay i even after this by the way i do not want to say that you know what this is the low this is capsulation okay it's way dangerous very dangerous saying that and this is another reason another reason why i do not like calling uh, lows and uh, tops and bottoms it it, it, you just get into the wrong mindset and you there are two things that could go wrong one you miss out on opportunities thinking that this is the low and you you take out all of your trade in a trend trade and you miss out on a massive move right we just talked about that the second thing that could happen is that you are thinking hey you know what um this is the low and i'm, I'm going i'm going to go long here and you go heavily long now i went long over here right but guys let me make something very very clear the position size that i have over here is not the same position size that i took over here and that and the position size i took over here not even close in fact the position size over here was the biggest position size i ever took because my confidence over here was a lot lot higher right and over here when when I took that position at 3,700, I did not have the same confidence and I'm proud of not having that same confidence. And because I didn't have the same confidence, I kept my position size lower than what I would over here. It was only around 70 to 72% of the position size that I had over here. And I'm happy with that because that's good habits for the long term because all it takes guys is for the one time for me to be wrong about this one time for me to either time the top wrong or time the bottom wrong and the volatility wipe me out. 
you guys are always wondering, right? What is Sean talking about in terms of volatility, slippage, spread, blah, blah, blah. He's always going on about it. You guys saw all of it now. You guys saw how much price was bouncing in seconds. You guys saw the difference between the bid and the ask on the order books when you guys are trying to get out and get into your position. You guys saw how this could have easily within seconds dropped all the way down to 3,000, 2,000, maybe 2,900. And holy, that can freaking hurt, okay? So yeah. Um, Two reasons why I do not like calling tops and bottoms. One, you get out of trades and you miss opportunity. Two, you get into trades or positioned and you get wrecked, all right? Okay, so going back to um, actual technical analysis, I was rambling way too much. Again, apologies for that. But these, these, these are times in the market where I think I should be pressing, pressing the pedal on this because it is so freaking important to keep everybody in this community safe, all right? Yes, guys, dream about big wins. Dream about big wins, but do it safely. Do it safely, always. And again, like I always say, hope for more profits, but fear losses. There's more to that phrase than meets the eyes, guys. The key word there is more profits. So when you're already in profits, you keep hoping for more and more and more. That's completely fine. But over here, guys, I wasn't in profits when I started taking the trades, right? I just took the trade. So I have to fear losses. So it keeps me cautious. I'm assessing the entire situation. I'm assessing that hey i'm taking a counter trending move this could go against me very very quickly very very badly over here i was feeling a little bit more confident about it a lot more confident why because i was going with the trend again another uh, topic for another time let's go ahead and talk about technical analysis major levels to the upside 6150 ish after that we have 6900 okay um we can we can see that we have uh, no yeah that's it that's it we can pretty much mark out these levels keep it simple keep it the mango way so that's the weekly guys i really do suggest playing the weekly and if you do want to play the lower time frames yeah there's opportunity i've actually been playing the lower time frames pretty much all day today just to kind of milk more out of these wallet these wall time moves i actually did lose a trade right before taking this video and it turns out i was wrong about being wrong i think i just wasn't patient and i just wanted to get a video done for the day so essentially i took a trade out of this breakout right over here um i got in somewhere around here and the price moved down on me and i was just like okay you know what i was hoping for continuation all the way up to 6162 i did not get that and i wanted to start the video and yeah price came down and now price did shoot up as soon as I started the video again to around 6,000. I got out of the trade though. So like this, right? You do take small losses every now and then, guys, but those losses should be so small that they don't even matter. That you just take them, think about the long run, like again, again, in the risk management module, right? We discuss this. We discuss the difference between true risk and the risk everybody thinks they are taking, right? People focus on risk per trade. And I'm, again, shout out to Ashok. Ashok actually messaged me today and he alluded to that concept. And um, uh, yeah, I'm, I, I, I'm really proud of people actually, you know, beginning to start, beginning to internalize these ideas. It takes some time to actually start practicing in them without even thinking about it. But um, I really like that you guys are uh, using the concepts that we talk about, okay? So again, it's not the risk per trade, it's the risks, uh, the risk that you take across all your trades and everything, okay? All the risk associated, associated with your trade, slippage, spread, um, counterparty risk, everything that we talk about in that module, it's, that is your real risk. That's what I talk about when it comes to risk management. Even you, like 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 we talked about in the module, your today, by the way, by the way, you know how in the module I talked about how um, your mouse could go out and that is actually a risk in itself? Today, my freaking keyboard went out. My keyboard randomly stopped working while I was in a middle of that freaking volatile move. Um, I was I was actually uh, uh, panicking a little bit. I'm like, Krisha, Krisha, Krisha. <laughs> it's pretty funny, a story for another time. Okay, um, yeah, I'm just really excited today, guys. Let's go ahead and talk about some technical analysis. We talk Talked about the major levels on the weekly let's go ahead and look at the monthly now the monthly is very important we'll pull up the ichimoku the monthly kind of dictated to us that hey you know what let's be safe over here at 10,300 right this kijun over here turned out to be very very key after all the kijun is the kingun so we got rejected on the kijun that was our first big sign then we lost the 10 sma on the monthly as well um is it showing over here it's not showing over here is it this is not the, okay this is not the 10 let's switch it to 10 and turn it on so yeah we lost a 10sma as well and that was the next big sign held the 10 can but what okay if you guys remember why i got on my weekly trade even though we had the weekly bounce just, honestly just go back go watch the cu past couple uh, of weeks of videos it's gonna look like oh my god sean is calling all of it so well is this guy is this guy a genius no i'm not a genius i just use such basic basic 
concepts, right? You guys saw what we did over here. We took a trade out of this 8,400 level. We got this bounce. You see this pick? We got this bounce. The trade was going our way. But why did we get out of this trade? Because we saw we saw this wick over here. This wick at 8,420 get taken out. I'm like, you know what? The market is allowing me to get out in profit. I will take it. I could be I could be getting bear trapped. And hey, I'm going to be part of the bear. We talked about that entire entire week, right? I'm going to be part of the bear trap. I'm going to be part of the bear trap. So be it. So be it. But look at how that paid off. Because I did not get stuck in that trade i was able to profit out of this big win instead right a 50 percent win so yeah such simple concepts that we talk about on a daily basis and all it takes is sticking to those rules and in time you will be rewarded for it now did i know this entire move was going to take place no right all i did was follow my rules and i got protected i got saved i did not have to deal with any any position management while this dump was happening and this was happening way too fast right and because of that guys i had the clear-headedness the clear stress-free mind to be able to take a trade over here now it would have been the perfect perfect trade if i actually got the shot to the downside but hey the this move for, to the downside let's say i caught it at around 8500 8, okay um 50 right well guess freaking what this wick over here is 50 percent anyways okay almost 50 percent in fact we caught it at around 3600 right 3700 3600 i bet that is let's go that's around 50 percent Yep, 52%. So, yes, I didn't catch this move to the downside. And you guys are probably thinking, well, you could have caught both, Sean. Maybe you could have. Maybe you could have. I know I could have. I wouldn't have been able to catch both moves. The way I trade at, at the very least, it's something I struggle with. I, I'm not sure it's something I want to work on. It's just my style. Usually when I'm on one side of the trade, it i do not take the other side of the trade i like to start fresh okay unless it is planned unless it's like a range trade and i actually plan saying that hey you know what you're gonna go up here and then i'm gonna um, take profits here and then short here and then come down then yes but in a trend trade you're not planning for the trend to ever end and over here guys nobody could have planned this nobody okay nobody could have planned this coming so if this happened in that morning and i'm sitting in profits i would have been like holy crap yes maybe i would have taken more profits off this level over here, out of this major move over here but would I have been ready to take the other side of the trade no not me at least i know my limitations as a trader and that's something that i know i would not have been able to do i would not have been able to long on the other side at the very least i'd need to have taken the entire profits out sit out out of the trade sit away from the charts sit on the sidelines and then come back that's how that's how i i trade at the very least maybe you guys could have done that i know i'm not good enough for that i'm just not good enough for that so yeah going back on, on over to the monthly we lost the 10 kin uh lost the 10 sma lost the 21 too now so unless we close the monthly about 7300 is it possible maybe maybe i i am interested to see where the 55 is this is the 200 this is not the 55 this is the 200 ema let's put on the 55 change the color purple is good uh change it to orange okay so the orange over here is the 55 and what do you know okay so we're living above the 55 too so if we close the monthly at least above the 55 that's going to be a good look if you guys do remember if you guys do remember let me turn off the horizontals again oops what am i doing okay there you go sean okay so if you guys do remember right over here right over here okay when we close this candle this candle on feb 2019 over the 55 over this orange line over here that was our sign that was when the mango channel actually started these were the first couple of videos i did where i said hey guys if we close over this 55 we hadn't done it yet but it was around feb where uh, feb 14th i think uh, it was <laughs> around valentine's day I, I believe i was like okay if we close about here then that's going to be our first big sign that we're likely going to go to 13,000, 14,000. What do you know? A few months later, we actually did that. Now, um, as a trader, I was a lot more um, risk. I, I was more risk. Not a, what's the what was what's the opposite word for risk averse? I was willing to take a lot more risk back here than I am um, willing to take over here in terms of um, my the the position the, the risk percent okay my position sizes are a lot higher now but the, my risk percent is a lot lower compared to over here so i caught a massive win over here do i have the same kind of guts anymore no i don't think so i don't think so um a lot has changed for me in terms of overall finances so you got to adjust your risk according to your overall finances guys always always okay which is why i never give you guys any advice because i don't know your personal finance situation okay so yeah um green 55 really good sign if you actually manage to close above this then holy crap crap holy crap like i don't even want to think about it like it's going to be 
ridiculous if we close about the 21 EMA, about 7,200. But um, no, first first things first, let's let's try to close the weekly above 5,400, and then we want to see the monthly defend 5,300. So they are, they are we are seeing some confluence over there too. I do like that. Okay, um, I do want to talk about something else. I was looking at. We don't have it over here. Let's go on to XPT. Do I have it drawn here? Nope, I don't have it drawn here either. So essentially, we do have a descending trend line that I was eyeing ever since we put this high over here on the monthly. I don't think I talked about it, not on video at the very least. So we do have something like this, but on the downside, we had nothing, okay? Nothing that I could actually work off. We just had these guys over here and we could have drawn a horizontal, I guess, but there was nothing over here to work with. But now with this wick, with this wick, as long as this is, this is the low for the month, um, we do have something that we could work off, okay? We can use these candle closes, use this wick over here, and just extend this to see where does this go and it goes somewhere around. This is, again, don't do this, guys, don't do this. Nope, we don't really have anything. Can we do something like this? I guess we could do this. And what do you know, that does line up with that 4,800 level. Huh, okay, so perhaps we are doing something like this, but again, why am I taking the candle closes over here and taking wicks over here? That's not right, I shouldn't be doing that. Okay, shouldn't be doing that. I need to stay consistent on both sides. So perhaps this, but then that, th my theory started with this. So I'll have to put some time into this, guys. Um, if you guys know what's going on over here, if you guys have put some time into this, let me know. All right, now let's go ahead and do link. We have link USD over here on the daily. And my, oh my, link. Surprisingly enough, hasn't been all that surprising. Yes, this massive move towards the downside has shocked a lot of people. And I do believe Link actually got down to around five cents or one cent or something on Binance. And some of you probably got filthy rich out of that, congratulations. But Link has pretty much done every single thing that we said over the past couple of days, right? And this is what I mean by Link is such a beautiful chart to trade. Because even in its major, major, major moves to the downside, it's trading beautifully. So first things first, um, Krisha, in the video prior to the one I did yesterday, she said, hey, we are likely going to come down to $2.10. So nonchalantly, right? Like, like it doesn't matter at all. And I was like, holy shit, Krisha, you're going to scare a lot of people. And what do you know? The very next day, we came down to that uh, $2.10 mark, right? Right over here. And then yesterday's video, I said, hey, guys, if we close underneath this level over here, then I'd be looking for Link to come. We had this horizontal, right? Do you guys remember? Um, this thin line over here, we said, we're gonna likely gonna do a pit stop over here, okay? Likely gonna do a pit stop over here at a dollar ninety. but I don't think Link is gonna stop over there. I do think that the major level that we should be looking at is a dollar fifty, right? We're looking at these guys here. And what do you know, guys? What do you know? Like, to be honest, you could have, you could have really used, just like how we marked these guys as a pitch stop, you could have marked these guys as a pitch stop too. And we essentially would have caught this wick over here if you wanted to play it that way. But going back to what I was saying, these guys were the major levels that you're looking at and that's where we wicked off. Yes, we came down a little bit lower, but if you didn't want to play Link as a major range trade, Jesus, man, it, it nailed it perfectly, right? It did not give you surprises the way Bitcoin did. Because let me tell you, a lot of people are looking at buying 7,200, buying 5,800, and I was looking to buy 7,200, and I had a lot of luck go my way, guys. Bitcoin just moved way too fast for me to even put on my freaking, um, uh, get, open up there a bit and get into that position. Like I was talking about in the video prior to this one, right? I was talking about how I just got back home. I opened the chart, Bitcoin sitting at 7,200. I pan on over to Link. I'm looking at Link, come on over to Bitcoin and Bitcoin's already sit sitting at 6,900. I'm like, holy crap. So a lot of, I, I get lucky too, man, sometimes. And I would have probably taken a loss there on that trade. I got lucky there. Jesus, um, think about it. It's, it's pretty... You, you you tend not to really appreciate those moments because they just go, but I'm pretty sure you guys have had lots of lucky moments that you're not fully appreciating. I'm, I'm pretty sure I've tried, tried for a trade over there. And then there are times where my risk management comes into play and that also saves me, right? We're just following your rules. And you got to combine your luck along with your risk management to stay in this game, man. And sometimes luck does not go your way. Like, let's say I bought 7,200 and dumped on immediately. That would have been bad luck. But there are going to be times where you get lucky. Like, I think today was an extremely lucky day for a lot of people. Guys, we got 50% moves on Bitcoin. The guys in the seed program, they got 50% plus moves on Chainlink. Let's go back on to Chainlink. Um, and and, and what, what are they using? Where's the link? Right over here. What are they using? They're using basic concepts that we learn in the seed program, right? We spend like what, four, uh, four and a half hours on the support and resistance module? Four and a half hours, guys. People underestimate SNR. They underestimate how, how much there is to it actually. Really marking it, really knowing what levels matter and what don't, they can be life-changing. Millionaires are made just playing simple horizontals, okay? Just playing simple horizontals. And 
just but these concepts are so easy once you really put the time into it okay and they come to you naturally so yeah going back to what you're talking about link doing really really bouncing like bitcoin did but is it is it out of the water uh, just yet? Let's go ahead and see where the 200 moving average is. I'm really interested in seeing. Okay, so we're living above the 200 moving average, coming and testing the Ichimoku. Let's hide the horizontals over here. Wow, this is really, this is really strong. If we can actually close above this level over here, that would be that would be really strong. But 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 cloud is red. Let's take it one step at a time. Okay, I don't want to get too excited just yet. But um, this is a really strong bounce. We have a, a bearish TK cross. I would want to see Link living above the cloud again, okay, above the green level, above the green cloud over here, guys, $3.50. There's a long time before we can do that, long time. Okay, first thing that we want to do is start putting in a four-hour uptrend. We may we may do that if we do something like this now, come down like this, okay, um, something, something like that, something like that. So essentially, we need to first set in this uh, set this as a lower high. Then we want to put in a higher low, then a higher high, come down, put in a higher low, something like that, all right? So yeah, I'm just a little tired right now, so bear with me, bear with me, guys. Link looking really good on the, no, I wouldn't say really good. There's nothing good about this, guys. I, I, don't get me wrong, the bounce is really good. The bounce is really good. And the fact that we've, we've retaken the, four, the, two, the, the daily 200 moving average, that's what is really good. The recovery, is potentially good now let's go on over to weekly to see what may possibly happen the chart is looking really ugly okay so what we need now what link needs to do not we, what link needs to do is close the week at least about two dollars and fifty cents i'd actually be looking at the zone over here between two dollars and fifty cents and two dollars and sixty cents okay that's what the week needs to close over okay we're actually living right above that let's go ahead and mark it out let's go ahead and mark this zone out right over here adjust it slightly Okay, so this zone is going to be really important. We can go ahead and delete all of this now. Um, that's important. We don't need this. We don't need this. We can keep that just to don't need this either. Clear up the chart a little bit. Okay, so this this this, this blue box is going to be a major zone. But to be honest, if you close about two dollars ninety five cents, that's going to be the big win for Link. Okay, two dollars ninety five cents. That's what we're looking for. If we close underneath this zone, I think we're going to come back and test somewhere around here, around two dollars thirty cents. Likely, actually, all the way down to two dollars twenty cents on the weekly. Okay, likely going to see your wick at the way least down there. So yeah, if close about here. Next step, $2.95. If you close about $2.95, that is the best case. And then after that, we're looking again around $3.50, $3.55. If you close underneath the blue box, then we're looking at $3.20 to around um, $3.21. Uh, $3.28 to $3.21. Okay. So yeah, that's Link USD, guys. Um, we looked at the weekly, we looked at the daily and the four hour. We looked at that already. We can look at the one hour, I guess, the lower time frames. I do think that this is, um, you can look at this as a rising channel, right? Rising into this major resistance over here. So it does look like Link wants to officially test these levels. No, we already test this, tested this level. So yeah, um, maybe another push towards the upside, test this horizontal um, officially over here, but this was the major test right over here that mattered $2.88 on the lower time frame. But if we start closing multiple four hour candles over here, guys, um, at least one, off, one four hour candle over here, I'd be looking for a test to at least $2.93. But that's gonna be the major test for Link. And if we close above that, if we close above that next, then I think we're gonna be testing somewhere around here, around $3.36, okay? So if we close above $2.90, then $3.36. This is what the lower time frames are telling me, but I'd actually just be safe and look at the higher time frames. Yep, so that is Link, that is Bitcoin, and let's go ahead and take a look at Link BDC actually. Link BDC, I am more, I'm more concerned with the weekly time frame. And let's see, did we actually come and close over Okay, okay, so this is actually looking really good. So let's start with actually hiding the mango ribbon and we look at these horizontals. As you guys can see, this major ascending triangle towards that we broke on onto the upside and met this major ascending move that gave us a 110% move that we were looking for all the way since the middle of Jan. We got that move, right? But guess what? We come and tested the ascending triangle for the second time now and we bounced strong above everything, above our blue box as well. That is ridiculous. Holy crap, that is ridiculous. So that is another 32% move on Link. Link giving wins after wins after wins. But if you go, on, go ahead and turn on your mango ribbon, you're seeing that we are closing about the tank and closing about the 10 SMA. Got an official test of the weekly 21 EMA and bouncing. Link is looking so strong on the Bitcoin pairing. Holy crap. Um, actually, a lot of 
coins, at least on my list, are looking very strong on the Bitcoin pairing eth theme, especially. By the way, I miss I missed such a good trade opportunity on a theme by a dollar dollar forty cents dollar forty four cents yes dollar forty four cents that one's going to freaking haunt me for a very long time. Um, I put a bid at around eighty one dollars and it came wicked down to eighty one forty four something uh, something around there on Delbit futures yet again and. Damn, that one would have been a nice one to catch. That one would have been so nice. And that one's... I, I can't even look at the theme chart right now because that one's so painful. So, yeah, I guess you can't catch them all, right? I'm enjoying my Bitcoin profits. And, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure a lot of you made some really, really good profits on Link. Again, congratulations to all of you in the Mango C program, Mango Grove, Mango Community, all of you on the YouTube comments that are killing it. I am so proud of all of you in the Mango community, guys. Everybody doing it the Mango way, the stress-free way, the risk management way, risk first, profit second, the Mango way. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will see you guys in the next one.